Did you spill my pint? Things are all right when you're in the fight. No time to think, can't even blink. Punches to throw, dodge the next blow. Chairs to uproot, tables to follow. No time to wallow in self-pity, because life ain't pretty. Throw some more punches, fighting by hunches. It's like painting by numbers, except for the numbness. There's blood on your clothes. Where from? God knows. The blood's not from you. It's the other man's due as it seeps through his skin. Ain't you glad it's from him? There's no point in holding back. Just continue to attack till a man spattered in red has finally fled. It's the angry man's brood and the thinking man's food. Yes, it's food for thought, the lesson you taught, that in the end, nothing really has changed. Just a few faces have been rearranged. A single ticket to Newport, that's all I bloody need. A single ticket to Newport, with small change I plead. A single ticket to Newport, I've got kids to feed. A single ticket to Newport, get flirty and I'll breed. A single ticket to Newport, hair that does recede. A single ticket to Newport, aggression fueled by speed. A single ticket to Newport, Cut me and I'll bleed. A single ticket to Newport, anxiety is freed. A single ticket to Newport, I'll follow any lead. A single ticket to Newport, ah, come on, driver! A single ticket to Newport, what? No change from a fiver. A single ticket to Newport, feel breath mixed with saliva. A single ticket to Newport, oh, I ain't no duck and diver. A single ticket to Newport, look, mate, I'm a survivor. The next, we still okay, yeah, cheers. Uh, the next one it goes out to anyone that's ever had their benefits cut. It's called missing payment. There is no money, no amount has gone into my bank account, so I dial the number, get in the queue for about an hour or two, and you just say, bear with me. Bear with me, bear with me, now I've got a bear with me. There's an elephant in the room by a big black dog I'm being consumed. No amount of breathing in a paper bag can stop a full on panic attack. And you just say, bear with me. I get wound up, you start to flounder. Do you you believe all I miss about benefit scroungers? Look, if you don't restore my payments, I will end up on the pavement. And you just say, bear with me. Bear with me, bear with me, now I've got a bear with me. There's an elephant in the room by a big black dog I'm being consumed. No amount of breathing in a paper bag can stop a full on panic attack. And you just say, bear with me, I bet you've got a landlord too, expressly paid on time by you. We're all being shafted, tell the truth. All we need is a bloody roof, so don't just say, bear with me. The next one is about unrequited love, or unfrequented love, (laughs) Uh, which just reminds me of uh, a badge I used to wear when I was a kid. Sex appeal. Please give generously. (laughs) Sometimes I look at you and think, just dreaming really. Then I listen and start to sink. When you pour out your troubles, I want to drink your heart. But that's kept locked away with all the crockery and silverware and special things for special occasions and special people, not me. I'm the invisible man in your estimation, but I'm real and I'm here and I care. When things go right, you run straight past me to greet a lover. But when things go wrong and there is no other, you can find me tired and alone. The remote console. The next one is a very personal one to me. It's um, when you come from sort of multiple ethnicity sort of background like mine. Uh, my grandfather was African and came here just in time for the race riots. What an unfortunate fella. Um, it's about how you, when you come from a background like mine, you sort of find your heroes where you can. Uh, one of mine was Muhammad Ali, so I wrote this, and it's more of a sort of journey of, uh, sort of life journey, really, rather than about the man himself. But I was really, when he died, it really sort of hit me. 
Uh, so this one's called On the Death of Muhammad Ali, which is a really shit way of introducing it, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye, butterfly. You stung like a bee. You stung me. From you, I learned resistance to all the nigger, nigger, pull the trigger, playground taunts. I could reply, come on, Bugna. The kids at school never listened to Blue Mick. They didn't know that what we needed was a great big melting pot. My parents did. They had me. The Ugandan Asian crisis hit, and I became called a Paki overnight because Enoch was right, and I should go back to where I came from, even though I was there already. And to some Asian kids, I was just another gory. And the white girls didn't stay too long because they didn't want to be called dog meat by their peers. Shove thy neighbor. So tell me, what the hell is the color of love? And the Rasters wore Wales football tops. Well, they were red, gold, and green. To them, I was a, a threat also, Babylon. I could not go back to Africa, a place I'd never been. And my heroes all spoke perfect English, Sidney Poitier, CLR James. The old, old ladies in Cardiff docks told me about the Africans when they came, how tall they were, how smart they were in top hats, spats and canes. And my granddad was a crewman, that's a tribe in Africa, was a crewman. And then he joined a crew. He sailed and settled in the Bay of Tigers, raised a family. And my father was a half-caste, that's what they said back then. And he would sing Calypso. Why don't you give me baddie shilling with the lion on it, lion on it, lion on it. But said Jamaicans were Johnny come lately's. <laughs> As I got older, boundaries blurred, bigotry rescinded like the tide. I became exotic, Amerindian, Latin American, because of long straight black hair, long gone, <laughs> and melanin darkened skin, myth make an identity yet again. And I don't know where I come from, but you don't know where I'm going, but I worry that the tide is coming in again. And sometimes I really do feel like throwing my hands up in the air. So goodbye, butterfly. You have spread your wings and I have been stung by the world. The next one is... Um Still, on a similar theme, uh, it was one I did for a competition a long, quite a while ago, and it would be, the theme was Impossible Things, and I thought, oh, you could do a nice child programme, a type poem on, on that. And in, in the end, I just got totally frustrated, and I was sat there thinking, what am I going to do? And I thought, there's you plonker, it's impossible living in Tory Britain. Uh, so it's about all the people the Tories hate, mainly people like us, I think. It's called They Call Me. They call me Atticus, because I live in an attic. They call me Platypus, because I duck my bills. They call me often, until they've had their fill. They call me Sick Note, because I'm often ill. They call me a cab, but never pay the meter. They call me Mr. Loverman, but hope I never meet her. They call me an alien, though I'm not from outer space. They call me Johnny Foreigner, although I'm from this place. They call me Wildcat. When I go on strike, they sound like Norman Tebbit when they say, on your bike. They call me Ivan when I have an awful cough. They call me a dosser when I'm sleeping rough. But all the things they call me won't catch me when I fall. I prefer they didn't call me anything at all. The next poem is a poem without a book cover. <laughs> it's a sort of recovery poem from uh, this various times when I've suffered from things like anxiety and depression and PTSD and stuff like that. This I wrote 
when I, I was basically on the sick and I was having a meeting with my managers and it was just like all of a sudden the, the recovery process kicked in and I had the idea for about three poems on the way home from this meeting and I had to scribble them down as I got in. Uh, this one's called Pause for Thought. When people ask what's wrong, I can bat them away with the phrase black dog stuff. Then I don't have to explain nausea, morning sickness of the mind, or my perfectionist heart, shredding thoughts, actions, utterances, a form of deliberate self-harm. Eventually, my Freudian slip mind bites back. You are no longer scary or powerful, and I'm no longer in your grasp. You are now a child's toy, just a stuffed black dog. I can put you back in the box. I might, I might finish with this one uh, this one is about two things it's just a, a sort of wistful dream for the future but it's also about my writing process uh, people have different sort of times when they write and my writing process is I'll wander around do loads of completely pointless things for ages while something cogitates and I'm just about to go back to bed well whilst I've been trying to work out what I'm the idea that's in my head I'll just get up to the bedroom and it'll pop into my head, usually about five o'clock in the bloody morning. And I'll think, oh, crap. And I'll have to stomp downstairs and write it before I forget it. Because if you sleep on a poem, it's not there in the morning, is it? Um, so this one's called Sleep. I should go to bed before it gets light. But there are things which bother me at night. One of them is hunger. We are short of food. Nothing in the cupboard to feed a growing brood. Another is affection. Just like love's labour's lost, each spurn tenderness, rejection has a cost. Then there is my skin, how it bloody thickens with each blow and insult. Deep inside it sickens. There's a different hunger. We need to rearrange the world that we subsist in. I'm hungry for the change. Another affection wells inside of me against bigotry and hatred and for humanity. Sickness is systemic, or so it seems to me. So I'll offer way to bed. Our dreams can set us free. Thank you.